Oh, hello! <laughs> we are live on videotape from the Hume Family Dungeon. My name is November Alpha, and my special guest is my special little brother, Will. Hi. How are you doing, Will? No, I'm, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me again. What are we doing here? Or for the first time, actually. Well, yeah. we did an intro mm -hmm. pilot podcast. Mm -hmm. Podcast pilot? Yeah. Um, but I... You know, this is the first real episode yeah. of the TFG Grand yeah. Prix, mm -hmm. a very professional cinema podcast. Mm -hmm. Do you ever watch a movie and afterwards like think of like, what the fuck was that guy doing? TFG, let mm -hmm. me back up. TFG okay. <laughs> said for this fucking guy. Mm -hmm. And what we're hoping to do in this Grand Prix mega tournament is discover the shittiest, most useless, um, least admirable characters. They, you know, someone who's often forgotten by the end. Someone who... Um, just serves plot purposes for, <laughs> like, a character development. <laughs> or uh, is usually played by Rob Hubel. I think mm -hmm. that's going to be one of the, the mm -hmm. ongoing criteria going forward. How many movies is he in? Rob Hubel? Not enough. That's yeah. what I always say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my favorite member of Human Giant. All three mm -hmm. are great. That's like an improv group, names. right? Uh, sketch group. Okay. used to be on MTV with mm -hmm. Death from Above 1979 doing the intro. That was one of your favorite bands. They, yeah, I still like them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's recently, well, I, anyways, I can't yeah. <laughs> talk about them and seeing them at a private concert in mm -hmm. Banff. Private. Accident. I walked into a local bar when I lived in Banff and mm -hmm. they were doing like one of those beer, oh, destination secret concert things. Oh, yeah. But it was at a crappy Rosencrantz Banff yeah. thing and I just walked in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was an unofficial contest winner and aren't we all mm -hmm. just by being alive so yeah. uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to examine the cast the you know well not cast the care the crew not the crew. characters thank you yeah. there was another c word those yeah. cunts, of yeah. Yeah. which one stands out as the worst yes to yeah give examples you've seen donnie darko yes seth rogan of course shows up mm -hmm. bullies that poor young girl with the speech impediment mm -hmm. he just leaves mm -hmm. so we have been choosing movies uh somewhat randomly somewhat, yeah it's kind of like uh we haven't figured out the criteria yet well i don't think there should be that much criteria yeah. because i want to see who this fucking guy is in like a movie from hungary i want to mm -hmm. see who this fucking guy is in a movie from like New Zealand, and then put them all together into a tournament. And so what we're going to do here, mm -hmm. we, we've already watched two movies. Mm -hmm. um, we picked one, and the other was just on. Yeah, and uh, which I love, by the way. I like that. It's uh, more of an opportunist way, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so, without further ado, you, <laughs> the first movie we're going to talk about, we're going to go to the O.C., Please don't say that. <laughs> you we... know the old joke, like if you turn the world on its side and shook it, everything loose would end up in L.A. <laughs> We're going to Orange County mm -hmm. with our very loose podcast structure. I think mm -hmm. it's only appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, Will, you pick this, so would you like to briefly explain the plot? Yes. Uh, a uh, overachieving high school student world is turned upside down. What's his name? Uh, his name is Sean Brumder. Brumder? Yeah. What kind of last name is that? Anyways, it's kind it's... of like a first draft character, Yeah, right? it's like, yeah, um, Colin Hanks. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I just had to jump on the Brumner, because every yeah. time I heard it in the mm -hmm. film, yeah. I shuddered a bit. I was yeah. like, what is this name? I... And this is coming from someone who names characters like Louisiana Major mm -hmm. or Archimedes Duskmaw. Mm -hmm. And I heard Sean Brumner and went, uh, I could use some work. Yeah, it's from, like, the... You go to the Guillermo del Toro school of naming things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's better than the J.K. Rowling school. Like, Luna Lovegood. Oh, but we have an Asian character. What should we name her? Cho Chang! Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, very, uh... <laughs> hmm. Leave it at that. Yeah. 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 So, so his, his life <laughs> is turned Rowling. upside down when he doesn't get into his dream school of Stanford. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the guidance counselor... And somewhat realistically, messes up the college application and takes no credit for it. Uh, yeah, we can edit that in. Phone call. Yeah, yeah. The first time. The first time caller, a long time. <laughs> well, like, first time in, like, three years I got a phone call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just how it works. Oh, yeah, my goodness. I, I never answer the phone on the, like, first time anymore. Can I feel we bad. back up? Yeah, just yeah. take it from plot? Because yes. I just talked all over you. 
Well, not really. Then, but so, like his life has turned up. Hold Sean Broder. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop for a second because we'll be able to cut edit. It. So, Will, you pick this movie. Yes. Would you like to take do the honors and explain the plot of the film? Uh, yes. A. Uh, <laughs> I'll try not to interrupt. This and thing. a high school student named Sean Brumder. Ooh. His life is turned upside down when he doesn't get into his dream college of Stanford after a college counselor mix-up. And that's basically the plot. It's a simple 82 minutes long, and it just runs from scene to scene. A lot of characters mm -hmm. in it, a lot of meaningless characters, but yeah, a lot of, like, and nonetheless inform the world of the Orange County. Correct. Yeah. And so he goes out with his brother... Lance. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And his girlfriend, uh, Ashley. Ashley, thank you. I yeah. was going to say Summer. Yeah. Um, out to Stanford mm -hmm. to drug Harold Ramis and to try to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, not a purposeful drugging, but. Yeah. Incidentally, as in all comedies. What year it is, did this come out? This came out in 2002. And it was produced by MTV. And Scott Rudin, yes. <laughs> it's the uh, 20th anniversary tomorrow. Wow. Uh, or, sorry, 19th anniversary. Wow, you can drink in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. speaking of which, I'm pretty sure we saw quite a bit of underage drinking in that film, but. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it crazy to think, like, oh, you have to be 21 to drink in, in the America? U.S.? That's absurd. How old to get a gun? I'm just, like, 16? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, they like serving in the military. I do, I, I've always liked to change the law to, like, 18. Do you yeah. think that's too young? For gun? For drinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mostly focused on the guns these days. I mean, somewhat unrelated, you'd always get people who are like, oh, you know, people would drink underage and, mm -hmm. you know, my son would die hey, you from you know, it. it's a good idea. Maybe if we got, maybe we lowered the, or abolished, you know, drinking ages, ages entire. <laughs> there would be less school shootings. But anyways, mm -hmm. let's, because everyone would just be hammered mm -hmm. or dead. Too hammered, they'd say. Infantile alcohol syndrome. You know, there's an actual study, and people talked about this with uh, Joker, that if <laughs> you because when films. yeah when people talk about like oh is this movie gonna encourage violence mm -hmm. the answer is that like studies have shown that they will people instead of committing violent acts will instead go to the movies and share that their feelings and, and experience that way so except it's, for that one story i think the guy went to see cars 2 and he mm -hmm. spilled his beans everywhere and all those kids laughed at him do yeah you know, do you know the meme i'm speaking of no it involves the I thought you were going it, somewhere. It involves the N-word, so I can't mm -hmm. fully say it. Mm -hmm. this, this guy eating beans. Um, <laughs> I always think of that when me and you went to see Man of... Not Man of Steel. Superman Returns mm -hmm. with Eric and Taylor Helferty. Oh, nice. And uh, we came back, and a guy had spilled his popcorn <laughs> all over our seat. And then oh. Eric Helferty had to sit in it, and it had, like, dill and everything there. And it's like, mm. when I went to see Tenet somebody spilled and oh, it's yeah. like there's six people in the theater <laughs> like what like it's not crowded it's better, awaken something in Eric Alfredi? It's better not awaken something yeah. in me. so it's some dill fetish we have i mean we're not here to kink shame but mm -hmm. so we have a very loose criteria essentially mm -hmm. um we're looking we're gonna watch a movie and find mm -hmm. the most useless pretty much immoral shitty character yeah you know or just like Anytime they come on screen, yeah, you're like this fucking guy, and it's not unusual. Do they have advantages? Like if you know them, if what? I know, if them. you know the character, it's like oh, that's Rob Hubel. Well, it's like, like no one else. Well, yeah. we're talking about character, mm -hmm. um, not actor, mm -hmm. because for the most part, if they're gonna be noticed, mm -hmm. they've probably done a good job. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's like Marie in Breaking Bad. Anytime yeah. you saw Marie mm -hmm. pop up. Mm -hmm. Even as someone whose favorite color is purple. Yeah. And I like theft and small spoons. Mm -hmm. But you think I would care more, you mm -hmm. know, especially she has a passion for angering the police, I, mm -hmm. a.k.a. her husband. Yeah. Another one of my passions. Mm -hmm. um, but every time she comes on screen, you're like, this fucking guy. I don't yeah. care. Like, the... Does she serve any plot? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's... Yeah. Yeah, well, like aside from a sounding board she's for a Hank, Hank. She's, yeah, yeah, she's a foundational yeah. character. Like if Hank had nothing to lose, mm -hmm. then he would have died much sooner. But I always think of but... characters. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. and, and I know we're getting away from it, but it's kind of the foundation to like yeah, the idea is about. these characters are these fucking guys are people who by themselves are useless. Um, 
Well, and, and, and they serve to inform but, another but character. But, like, it's in a or advance the function, plot. Yeah. so they're, they're making a choice that, you know... Like, I'll... everything is an implicit choice. Like, the way that these people dress. Like, you, mm-hmm. you see people out and mm-hmm. about and never think, they got up and purposely put on those clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, they chose to wear, you know, black socks and sandals. Mm-hmm. It's like, when is this fucking guy doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. so, like, I mean... The magician later in Saved by the Bell is one of the ones I keep coming back to. Um, this <laughs> and what one to come back to? In a show filled with, like, pretty much centered upon the origin story of this fucking guy, Zach mm-hmm. Morris. But all this being said, in Orange County... Mm-hmm. Um, let's get to the characters. Let's, yeah. I want to put out... Like, I always feel like it's my duty to put forth my choice mm-hmm. for this fucking guy of this film. Just because of... Um, I'm like fairly certain people call him this fucking guy more yeah. than they say his shitty. I, I think I know who you're gonna pick. Chase. Yes. Um, yes. He just personally, I mean, despite his sexual history with her as a kid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that came out naturally. Yeah. But uh, I'm pretty sure he was in one scene. He played a teacher. He blinked more than he it should have. Um, like it was just blink, 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 blink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was like, oh, Which is boy. a thing that he does. Could be drugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we Ben Affleck does it too. Those are like the main... Ben Affleck Ben and Affleck Chev- probably just thinks that's acting. But um, yeah. Chevy Chase in this season one scene... You brought it up before the movie even started. Like when we got Chevy to Chase. the main titles, when you saw, saw his name. Face. I was like, oh no. Yeah. He, like Early contender. The... You said early contender. Like Yeah, I, he just has the energy. You mm-hmm. know, like no one in that film seemed to like him. He... Mm-hmm was an asshole for no reason he had a britney spears joke um mm-hmm. like a sound mm-hmm. uh q uh seemed quite but he aroused. was like zero consequence he seemed like a shitty Not, guy i have a theory i have like something more to that okay. though to help the chevy chase case okay it, it's that like the reason that the plot happens at this otherwise well-to-do school yeah is and it seems to be like a rich school like with a lot of donors and stuff is that like chevy chase is an asshole even though he doesn't say anything you know he's an asshole because the principal is the one that hires the guidance counselor yeah. so he hired with tom, tom Wynn, who makes the and mistake White. and didn't care yeah he yeah. hires an illiterate english teacher i don't know that he's illiterate i just think he has the there's the words in the script it's like i have the sneaking suspicion that my english teacher is illiterate oh i didn't know this yeah 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 um it's easy to get mike white mixed up with that role mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. a teacher yeah with his other mm-hmm. arguably this fucking guy turn in school of rock yeah you know where he's also a teacher mm-hmm I, I didn't see his episode with his dad on the Amazing Race. Mm-hmm. You know that well, show about white people. Or he came up second on Survivor, eh? Mike second, White. Second place. He was on Survivor. Yeah, yeah, because oh, he had wow. good. He was good friends what with Jeff Probes. He did Amazing Race first. I looked mm-hmm. this up for the movie. You see, because see what kind of career this writer is. I, w- I would suggest that just by this engaged conversation, Mike White is not a this fucking guy because we mm-hmm. like him. Yeah, we've noticed. He's given him. us movies. Whereas him. I mentioned Chevy Chase, and we immediately well, changed uh, yes. the topic. <laughs> so I think that is like a fairly. Uh, you know that's a that points to the chase cases you said mm-hmm, yeah. so eloquently. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is his function? Is essentially to set the scene, right? He's yeah, a, he's a table setter. He uh, appears in the first fifteen right, he's minutes. La- he's a lazy teacher. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if he. Up. Yeah. He had his feet up and. He's the, the principal, right? Or is no, he a teacher? I thought he was a teacher. I thought he it was could a have class been either. Because then the girl, mm-hmm. um, who the the niece of Gary Marshall. Um, oh, she what? finds she... out yeah. she gets into school in that class, right? Yeah. Doesn't she? In front yeah. of Sean. Oh, Robert. right. Yeah, yeah. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah. and then, you know, that goes on and on and on from there. Mm-hmm. And Chevy Chase doesn't come back, but he's yeah. like credited like fourth in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the crediting of this movie is kind I of I was like, it, it, it was a big smack of, hey, um, my kid's think... in this MTV movie. Yeah. Uh, I think Gary Marshall. From... I think Gary Marshall is like main credited when they mention it oh, in boy. the in the opening, and he... it's like there's like looking back, I didn't realize it until after watching it this time. But there's a lot of people 
in this movie. It must have been tough for a game writer to find uh, some time in between shooting, like, um, you know... Princess Diaries oh, 1 no, and 2. It would have been say, in between at that point. I was going to say, like, he did all the, like, New Year's Eve... Yes, in Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Flag mm-hmm. Day films. Yeah, and Mother's Day was the third one. Day. Last movie ever did before he died. Day after tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all yeah. the day films. The story goes like is day. that he watched Mother's Day after he made it, and that's what killed him. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, by which I mean good joke, because that's not a good movie. Yeah, yeah um, I believe it won a couple of rounds. It's like, like Chevy Chase um, deserved the recognition mm-hmm. in this case. Though, this is a he was definitely this a, is a discussion, so mm-hmm. I'm curious to hear who you chose. Well, it's, Orange Canopy. I, I Orange just want to bring up one more thing about Chevy Chase's character, which reminds me of, like, the ratio of competent to incompetent people in this movie, which is always kind of funny in a comedy, mm-hmm. of, like, they hired Chevy Chase probably because he's his character, he plays incompetent, like, very well. And it's like you think of it like there's a lot of like Jack Black's character mm-hmm. is like uh, has like a bizarre tunnel vision. It's just kind of I don't know. I'm getting away from it, but I, I want just on a lot of drugs. To yeah, be honest. I I actually found. I mean, wow. Leave it to I just Hollywood no to way get it... one thing right, which is the drug use and abuse with all the uh, gritting teeth and the um, mad manic blinking and the. Um, you made me think of something though about it. No, it's that the uh, like related to how Hollywood runs because yeah. this is like a Hollywood Hollywood movie. Yeah. Everybody is famous or connected yeah. to somebody famous. Everyone had it. a handshake deal on this one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the thing is, is that the plot is pretty much entirely inconsequential because at the end, spoiler alert, is like John Lithgow mm-hmm. just buys their way into Stanford, and the mm-hmm. entire plot kind of doesn't... Well, right. it matters because they need to get there, so and Jack Black needs to burn need to the building down. Yeah, yeah. In the film. Yeah. So... But money what, solves what everything, and dr- drugs cause, are the cause of all the problems, and money is the solution, too. That's basically well, how we would run. Well, Allen was just, like, vibing out, and that's why she sent the wrong transcript in. Yeah, and then they accepted Lily Tomlin in her place. Oh, man. <laughs> I'd watch that movie. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the... She, Lily Allen's acted in movies, right? Lily I know Tomlin? she's a singer. No, Lily Allen. Did I say Lily Allen? You said Lily Allen. Oh, God. But I figured since her brother is Alfie Allen that she he's must like have walked in. one of my least in. favorite characters in Game of Thrones. But he's like, I suppose, a good oh, actor. Goodness, I feel terrible for having said Lily Allen instead of Lily Tomlin. Well, that's I... fine. Like, they're both Lilies. Mm. Like, people, it's like confusing. <laughs> I used to confuse Regina Hall and Regina King all the time. And the thing is, is that their career, they're both black women they're both really well respected for what they do they're both like really funny Mm. uh but they're both like basically background players for like a really long time in their careers Hmm. Uh, both deserve better yeah 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 whereas lily tomlin deserves much better lily allen probably got a bit too much (laughs) but lily lily tomlin has a lot of like probably a lot of royalties from magic school bus i would i would hope so sag after yeah you told i didn't know that she voiced miss frizzle Mm -hmm. but uh who would your choice be for the crown of this fucking guy for orange county the one who basically and you know it's it's my bias but the is nat faxon um just because the Everybody at that party, there's that guy. Yes. And, like, when I posted this to Reddit of the what I bought, that the article that I wrote that inspired this, was... Which that, you can read on filmgamer. Yeah, dot com, com, dot .com. Or dot .ca or dot .net. I own all dot three now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to go be taken to school. There are laws against, uh, I think, me Dug choosing... Dubs. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, there used to be one on dot .net, but not anymore. Anyways, when I posted it, the first comment I got was an out-of-context comment from his character uh, say just saying one of his lines at the party of him trying to be a pseudo-intellectual. Yeah, and that's one of the qualities I think of when I think of this fucking guy. So about the, his writing. Yeah, yeah. Right? You hear a lot... Yeah, you hear a lot of people on social media now in challenges talking about, like, are you the main character in the thing? This, this guy thinks he's the main character. Yeah. Uh, it depends. I guess, I guess so. 
Uh, yeah, just hit. Well, they should they notify should be you. Able to. Yeah. So, okay. all of this being said, mm -hmm. Will, how about you tell us your choice mm -hmm. for the this fucking guy for this masterpiece, Orange County? Don't mm -hmm. call it the OC. Well, I don't even know. Is he guy at party though? Like, is that his? Is that no? A... I was saying because we got interrupted. Do you want to take it back from the? Oh, your start of the answer. Okay, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm Will, gonna. Who is your this fucking guy for Orange County? My fucking guy is a pre-fame, pre-Academy Award-winning <laughs> uh, writer. Yes. Nat Faxon. Writer in real life and in the film. Yeah, basically, probably <laughs> probably playing a version of himself. Mm -hmm. If you notice, and he's also what they would call a that guy. If you watch the Rewatchables podcast, he's the guy in the background. I always notice him. They have something on Rewatchables where they say that guy. They have two. He's like, oh, he, Bill Simmons, I know. He, yeah. he refers to, he's like, oh, he's a that guy. And they it basically sprung out from the, they call it the Joey Pants Award. As Joey Pants was somebody who became like famous as kind of like a background player a and actor. yeah yeah and then he so became like known Mendelssohn. so he like graduated basically yeah, but like he was Michael that Shannon. but he was like third fourth string character we're yeah. not talking about something interesting to follow mm -hmm. is well, as we watch films this movie had when you said that guy i thought mm -hmm. you were going to talk about the famous extra who has red curly hair? He's a bigger guy. Who is in this movie? He's in this. Yeah. He's in Community and uh, uh, Super Bowl many commercial. Many other things. A lot of Austin lot of Powers. Yeah. Music videos. I recall. I seem to recall seeing him in the in those. Yeah. Um, fuck. We got he so is a that guy. Here. Yeah, I know. Can but we stop? It's and a then, podcast. And then yeah. do the intro again, and I won't. Or like throw to your answer, yes. and then I'll yeah. just stop talking. Yeah. So after, with all that being said, with all the Chevy Chase case being being made. Mm -hmm. Who is your choice for the this fucking guy of Orange County? Academy Award winner Nat Faxon. Oh boy, Be because he <laughs> human turtleneck. <laughs> because he's a writer, mm -hmm. and it's like he's kind of the anti version of Colin Hanks's character yes. in the movie. Yes, and he tries to steal the girlfriend, mm -hmm. which is a uh, that fucking guy move it is and very true. it's very kind of quick and he thinks he, he matters he thinks he's the main character mm -hmm. but he is not really that important he's just kind of there and she kind of tosses him off but i can't think of anyone better to be the premier choice for that fucking guy yeah and than... especially with his face voice mm -hmm. um, teeth teeth yeah turtleneck i'm surprised he doesn't what get a was face. that line i know you quoted oh yeah there, yeah where you were talking about his writing yeah it's ostensibly about vampires but in another way it's about the reunification of germany no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it'll be great to to see if the word ostensibly comes up in other films mm -hmm. and if that saying that word might just be one of the secret keys mm -hmm. to winning this whole tournament that's a very strong choice yeah what uh what What's... What is Nat Faxon's, like, plot device? Like, what role does he serve, do you think? Uh, he's just, uh, basically, if I were to guess, and I don't know screenwriting as well as you do, but it's like, he's like a late obstacle of, yeah. like, it's like, oh, shoot, like, the movie's, get, we yeah. need, like, a little thing, and we're not ready for the climax, we right. need another plot like here. Like, the low point. Do you think that's, yeah. like, the low point of the When film? he falls off the roof, yeah. probably. How, how much of a fall do you think that was? Like, Sean Brown? Eight or... foot? Uh, or eight or ten feet. He made it look like twelve. Like yeah, ten feet. feet to look like twelve, I'd say. And he lands on you grass. Don't... You can see, like, he bounces yeah, a bit. Yeah, like, yeah. there's a pad beneath it. But... You know what my... <laughs> that would... That would... Oh, man. You know what my basis for roof height is, and it's based mm -hmm. off of movies? Yeah. It's No, it's in Signs, mm -hmm. when Joaquin Phoenix says, our roof is 10 feet high. Oh, okay. And he talks about the female Olympian, who's the alien. He's like, he talks about a female Olympian jumping on onto their roof, because she suggests that it's, mm -hmm. the cop suggests that, but he mentions, like, 10, 10 feet, feet high is, and I look at our house, yeah, and I'm like, I'm six feet. That I, that I hide from our family in, in mm -hmm. the back, backyard. Mm-hmm. 
think that's about 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't do jumping jacks. Well, anyway. I think to our eaves trough, from here to our eaves trough mm. is probably 10 feet. Because it's like two of me and then... Pay hey, attention to everyone who's casing our house for, uh, you know, piecing together all Staking the Staking out the podcast. Everything we're going to be saying about the house to try to break in and steal our Lost in Space regular DVD. And I'll say this right now. I love I, that. I do not like that movie. I don't think we're going to watch it again on here. I don't think we are going to watch probably any Akiva Goldsman films. Well, oh, that's going to be tough because how do we know Beautiful there's Mind? something that he didn't ghost right? Because he, he's, he he's, it sucks. He got a lot of stuff made. So you're he saying like, I, was like, I Am Legend is out. I, I like realized sucked. So I Am Legend is out. Batman and Robin is out. A Beautiful uh, Mind. Mind is out, which Lost he won an Oscar space. for. Um, the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, well, pretty much that half of that Colin series. Hanks dad's films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's all connected. Cinderella so Man. If we had to choose between in a Cinderella Man sort of boxing fight, yeah. like you know, between... Russell Crowe had to to fight Chevy Paul Chase Giamatti. and Matt Faxon. Yeah. Um, that's actually tough. Who that would... is a tough one. Um, I bet you Nat Faxon would probably win just because he's I younger. Think so, he was just bigger. Because of, like, you mean in a physical fight? I think... Well, I mean both. Like, in a physical it's... fight, Chevy Chase would win because he's a monster and he would not fight fair. He's probably hit people before. He has definitely hit people. Nat he's... Faxon, he's I mean, he's probably nice been punched guy. more. He's probably yeah. been punched more. He's used to playing that role, mm. which is why he's a writer. One, like we mentioned, We're talking about a writer versus an actor. Nat Faxon's an actor he's been in stuff like yeah i know, know his name. i know <laughs> but, but he's like he won an oscar with the dean from yeah. community which this is not a community podcast no matter how many times i talk about it um could you go on the deeper level i'm not saying we have to get into it now but mm -hmm. say that this is a movie about writers versus actors no okay i would say that this is i mean no because both writing and acting are active uh pursuits mm -hmm. and I would say that this is something, I mean, there, this is kind of a rough idea, because, like, he just learns that, like, he can write anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's like... Mm -hmm. Which is true. It wouldn't have been as much of a revelation if computers didn't exist. Do you Where you had to yeah. sit at a desktop and write versus just being out on the fucking beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're writing with a stoner friend. But he does write on computers. each other. Yeah. They make a very strange joke about one of them being yeah, molested. I think they make... I had a theory watching it this time, because I always thought it was gross as, as a yeah. kid watching it, but I make a thing of, like, because Mike White is gay, his father is, like, openly gay. I wonder if there's, like, some subtext there of basically no. the surfer guys realizing that they're gay Maybe for each other, because they don't play it. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting thing... And it happened in the early 2000s where it's sexual assault, but it's, like, not played for laughs. Like, it's it's just there. I think it's the gay panic. But the um, but um, Harold Ramis making it with uh, Colin Hanks as he's driving, and they, like, after they drug like him. successfully make it yeah, with yeah. him, does he? But it's, like, it's not held against them. Uh, like, it's like a weird a thing. close-up shot of mm -hmm. Colin Hanks and... Ramus's and, tongues mashing. And I know we're yeah. and I know we're getting beyond it, but there's also the flashback scene with the gay best friends and the drunk best friend of Ashley's making out at the party or at Lonnie's funeral of that. There's like a flashback. Yeah, they have like it, a triple yeah. threat match. Yeah, yeah. In a shower at a and funeral. they and they mention that multiple <laughs> and they mention that like multiple times. Like people it's kind of a thing about comedy where people are like so ready to be like intimate and it's i don't know i don't know if it's desperate comedy it reads as I desperate think part mouth. of it is the gay panic was funny to hollywood producers around so that time how yeah. are we going to decide who is it well, that's personal preference because oh. i once you mention that facts yeah. and when i look at the criteria like he's not a principal member of the cast like he's not even credited like yeah. chevy chase is credited <laughs> yeah which for me, was one of the reasons to pick him, but now that I think about it, it's going to be one of the reasons working against him because mm -hmm. he's he's a known commodity. Yeah, yeah, he's not an unexpected he adversary. He could have played John Lithgow's role. He could have played any of the other. Guy I don't roles. think I want to mention this because he like Ramus, he could have played Bob. I, I want to mention this, even though it, like, adds to our time. weird stoner friend. Is that, like, I actually want to take some, because you mentioned it, I want to take some time to, like, celebrate John Lithgow's role in this movie, him and Catherine O'Hara, where you said, when you commented, it's like, it's because these actors do such a good job mm -hmm. that they, you even, like, care about it at right. all. 
one uh one of the USA Today writers actually wrote it. It's like everybody in this movie puts so much effort into such a yeah. banal role mm-hmm. that you would think it was like the last teen comedy ever made. Yeah, uh, they, I mean, it was much better than I thought, and the direction and photography were really good. Did it hold up better than you thought it would? Um, better than I thought it would. Yes. Was uh-huh. it? better than when i first saw it no, no. Yeah, yeah. um when i first saw it i would probably be like that movie's hilarious it's like an eight out of ten now it's probably closer to six out of ten do you remember a lot of like belly laughs in the theater do you know i don't no yeah, i yeah. don't um i don't even really recall what i laughed at too much yeah um just enjoying just the movie Matt Paxson, really um like because we <laughs> both like really responded well to his character I want like I don't I think it's pretty much he's gonna win because like well I want to bring up <laughs> well I want to bring up one thing yeah before we move on yeah it's a portrait of a lady is yeah. is Kevin Klein making it all the way into this movie yeah. and he's actually uncredited is he's it? somebody who would in any other movie probably play the this effing guy or the dad he probably yeah. would have been a better dad yeah well he was he was coming off hot off uh, life as a house with Hayden Christensen uh, a, a year before this movie yeah, came Anakin out Anakin turns into a house yeah <laughs> still yeah. haven't seen it by the way but it's house, but it's one of those early 2000 movies that a lot of people formatively nostalgically saw and then refer to as a good movie i don't know if it's good like or not falling on the cedar. yeah yeah because i know people point to it it's house like fog and sand. A- anakin skywalker is a good actor look at life as a house with kevin costner <laughs> <laughs> uh still haven't seen it so but... if i mean nat faxon i think is gonna he, he takes it let's just yeah, give it there's to him. like a, a huge shame it, unexpectedly factor. there's a huge shame factor i would think watching this movie with someone who doesn't know, like, who only has seen the movie. We're trying to be foremost here. We're not going to try to, I mean, just, we are using a lot of actors' names, but yeah. I want to try to focus on, like, the, the, the oral fiber yeah. of yeah. these mm-hmm. minor characters. Yeah. There's a definite shame factor. If you said after the movie to someone who didn't know anything, mm-hmm. do you know who my favorite character was? Yeah. The turtleneck boyfriend. Yeah. I think, actually, you should have went with that guy. Mm-hmm. I was kind of rooting for him to go with her. I think they make her. more sense as a character. They have yeah. matching uh, dental structure. They both had like the <laughs> gap in their front teeth. Oh, I never. She does. Yeah, she. Does I, I never. I wanted to <laughs> shout out to her character, Skylar Fisk, uh, daughter of yeah. Sissy Spacek. I didn't know that until you said it. And then I didn't know it until see. researching it. Yeah, because yeah. they look exactly. She looks like a prettier version of Carrie. <laughs> Um, this is like uh, a... as all children look prettier than their parents. Mm. Eh, sometimes, most of the time, mm. unless they're like too oh, good I looking. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I go know. that far. Yeah, yeah. Just but to say that in every case. Anyway, but you know, I just wanted to say Sissy Spacek and um, Mr. Fisk. I forget his actual name, but he's actually. Wilson. Lo- no, that's the Carlton mob. Boss. <laughs> Wilson uh, Fisk the... is the mob boss in Daredevil. The way that this is now that we have the kingpin, we have Netflix. But I was rooting for her to be with him. Yeah, yeah. Just sort of a personal preference for Netflix. Like even compared, he's a quintessential of that guy. Colin Hanks, who's very likable. Yeah. So we have our champion. Who would have been in that guy? Orange yeah. County Division. Yeah, unquestionably. He Great is, start. He is our de facto number one seed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The next movie we watch is Blue tough. is the warmest color too. The secret of the ooze, otherwise known as. Portrait of a lady on, on fire, fire and fuego. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell us the plot? Yes. Um, Portrait of a lady on fire. The story. Yes. <laughs> is a um, is a fictional drama, uh, foreign language French film uh, about um, a lady who is a portrait artist yes. and um, gets hired to drop a picture of this uh, mysterious just drop a lady picture, if I may. Uh, an oil painting yes. of a royal oil painting that's yeah. one day going to hang in museums yes of a royal subject so you got the stakes there yes yeah, She's yeah. Gonna doodle a little picture in her margins uh-huh. of her math homework and she has to no, it's an oil painting. draw this oil painting painted in- paint this oil <laughs> painting she does draw it. do you draw it? yeah because you trace first unless you're Leonardo da vinci who yeah did just because it says anything. portrait that's why i'm like they're... paint a portrait yeah an oil like painting, painting which is very difficult to do semantics of this lady in secret in secret yeah 
and uh, from then on, the relationship sort of develops. Right. She yeah. had like refused to sit for other portrait artists. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Notably, a man. Yes. And <laughs> this being said, as you'll find soon enough with my choice for this film. We need to re repeat the TFG Grand Prix is not gender specific. Exclusive. Yeah. We're all inclusive. Any guy, gal, non binary pal who is shitty enough mm -hmm. to get noticed by us yeah. as like, this fucking guy, look, mm -hmm. what is this lady doing? Like, mm -hmm. do you remember the first episode of Twin Peaks season three? When yes. the cops show up mm -hmm. and the yeah, you lady said the with first her dog. dog. Yeah. And she was just, oh, oh, oh. And I was like, this fucking guy. Mm -hmm. Marie, I mean, we've already made it clear. Now it's Damn just, it, now it's starting to sound yeah. sexist, where mm -hmm. it's like, these fucking women. Well, I mean, the patriarchy is inherent in all of the. But stuff I don't want it to seem like we're picking likable, we'll get shitty to... guys, and then unlikable, shitty women. That's no fair, because we want to find. Likeable, but I don't find na... shitty, like non-binary. To women go back to Nat... Hollywood had the courage. I want to go back to Nat Faxon <laughs> one more time because I want to ask: Is he likable? I think in general, it's tough, he has like a very likable, but apple, is his character is his energy. character in the movie? Let me just say, in real life, he wrote a movie and was awarded that I fucking hate. I do not like the Descendants. I so it stands to you, yeah, in in a way of a perfect example in real life of completing mm -hmm. that goal. But he's going to be so, tough to beat if he's not number one so. at the end of our I have sixteen a, episode. I have podcast. a tough time thinking like this movie is was a I good, did not... was a good test because there's like. Um, on-screen characters are limited to, like, seven or eight people. Yeah, and missing. so everyone has, like, kind of an important role. Yeah. However, my choice, there is a scene, they are helping, when they're coming together, the two yeah. ladies. Yeah, yeah. They are helping one of the younger stewards. The maids, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she gets pregnant. Yeah. Unseen male. Yeah. Contender already. Yeah. They don't have to be physically pre present. They just have to cast a paw. <laughs> yeah. Over the it's like movie. a disgusting tinge of the mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. That being said, though, she goes to get uh, a shmush martian, an yeah. abortion mm -hmm. in English. Yeah. And um, that smush martian is French yeah. for abortion. And as she's <laughs> and as she's laying on the bed, and mm -hmm. the very gruff midwife is dealing with her. There's this fucking baby yeah. laying on the bed beside this poor young girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poking her in the eye, mm -hmm. playing with her nose, mm -hmm. laughing in her face. Mm -hmm. That it was a obliviously a, too, a which is an important baby. component. A very tiny baby. Yeah, yeah. This fucking baby. Yeah. That was my choice. Do we? And I don't even think we know that. Do we know that it's a that it's a guy that the, the baby? baby's? That's why I've just been calling it a baby. It was yeah. like a. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's genderless. gender neutral. It's yeah. like a potato. Although it's the implications is that if it like it were, if we knew that it, or just someone left. if we knew it was a boy, it, it's kind of funny. Well, uh, I don't and, think it matters. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, a redheaded yeah. baby. Yeah, um, yeah. There's the little girl who's there mm -hmm. too. It's yeah. a beautiful film. Beautiful film. Who makes, but mm -hmm. for me, yeah. when like it rung the same notes with why? me when I why? saw that baby. Why? 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 this poor woman yeah. in the face as when I saw Chevy Chase. Because yeah. that's what Chevy Chase <laughs> does. Feels he like cries. To me. He's like poking. Unnecessarily. Like, oh, he's like poking me in the eye because mm -hmm. I have to see him. Mm -hmm. He's acting like he got poked in the eye because he's blinking so much. Mm -hmm. It's like just, maybe Chevy Chase has a ghost baby. I right around his face poking him. I think that that baby, because yeah, who has never met a baby who didn't think that they were the star? Mm. They a dead one. I've I've never made I've Terrible. never Terrible. I've never met uh, a baby who did not Do think they were the babies? star. I I meet several. I uh, on purpose. I, I yeah 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 yeah. Uh, I meet several. I, I made several. several daycares. Yeah. I um. I go to hang around them in I the go, afternoon. I go to Timbits hockey games with no children. Yeah, just yeah. to watch, just for the love of the game. Yeah, yeah. So just to baby, heckle that just... French baby, that baby. Who? No matter how, like. Hmm, I want to say get out of the 17th century. It really, it really. 18th century. It was with that kind of yeah we did it attitude. wasn't it 1765 yeah it was the, yeah, it was the late 1700s. The life expectancy was not great then. No, um, yeah. these two women. But I want to like say, young 20s, do you think that it's spinsters? For... Do you do you think that it stirred on you so much because that baby, baby to me as she's lying back on the bed thinking yeah. of like what she's about to lose there's yeah. the one like in your face argument literally well, of, of like what you're about to the lose literal, as a yeah. positive that yeah. completely. 
she smiles at the baby. Yeah. I think she's just humoring him. Yeah. With his bad manners. Yeah. Him, her, yeah. it, the they, baby. They. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's not... I think that the baby makes the best anti-abortion argument that I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it, that baby is, like, the equivalent of, like, those old boomers hanging outside of, like, uh, abortion clinics and, like, harassing people. This fucking baby. Um, what a shitty attitude. Mm-hmm. I bet he or she was a real diva mm-hmm. on set. Yeah. You know, they could I bet only they... work for, like... Eight hours a day. I bet you they had to replace her with like another baby that looks the exact same. Probably I don't a twin. Care that baby represents the loss of innocence. Mm-hmm. You know that we mm-hmm. look at this beautiful young girl having mm-hmm. to go through this excruciating medieval process mm-hmm. to undo the work of what it has to be of this fucking mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, for her. Yeah, because she didn't want it. Like she basically this said, fucking guy. Yeah. Hey, uh, so. mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all this being said, I think I've smashed this baby uh, enough. <laughs> Great word choice. Yeah, phrasing. <laughs> Who is your choice for this film? I. What year I'm, did this come out? It was last. This year. came out in. So I have this debate with people because there's, uh, the official word on it is that uh, it's a 2019 movie. Yeah. Uh, it came out in 2019, uh, in 2020 is when it got, like, a wide release, but... Yeah, it's uh, a 2019 but film, But France like... submitted it for Best Picture last year, so basically it it had its awards qualifying run in 2019. It instead lost mm-hmm. to Les Miserables, mm-hmm. uh, for Dude. Best Foreign Language Dude. Film. You haven't seen this oh, version of Oh, not the Les Tom Miserables. Hooper one. It's the, apparently, like, a very good... Criterion says it came out in 2019. Yeah, which wasn't the version we. They watched. go by the mm-hmm. official release of um, uh, of the awards qualifying run. It came out in 2019. It had like a wide re-release or something in America in 2020, uh, and we watch it, of course, in 2021. Mm-hmm. It's one of those movies comes out at the end of the year. I believe its official limited release was at the end of November, early December. Easy. Of 2019, so it's I would accept it as a 2019. Are you saying movie. that the release date is the this fucking guy? Of the film? Was yeah, like, it's it's a, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, uh, who is your choice? It's the, I'm I'm gonna work it out and then I'm gonna give you my choice. Okay. So my uh, the most obvious choice is the uh, mother of the lady who's getting her portrait done, who's just like oh, this person, like you feel it, like ah, oh, I have to deal with this person. With She's the, your choice. That's the main I know character. You're no, work it out no, but I just want to reiterate: it, cannot be a major obstacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which is why yeah. I disqualify it. And then, as okay, you said, the the person who's being married is like the second choice. But my main choice, my first choice, and it was just it comes down to who is this fucking guy? It's <laughs> it, it's instinctual, mm-hmm. and it is a guy again in a movie that like. I wouldn't say goes out of its way not to show men. The so reverse it's, lighthouse. So it's kind of like an achievement, yeah, as I called it during <laughs> during the movie, <laughs> is like the rowers mm-hmm. in the rowboat when mm-hmm. she's carrying the painting, and this is an artist, is that she's painting, mm-hmm. uh, and you see them at the beginning of the movie bobbing up and down, mm-hmm. and she has something, I don't even think you officially know that it's a portrait, but it's something important to her, and it just flies out off the boat at some point in the mm-hmm. beginning and she dives out to get it and there's like 10 or 20 like 10 i'd mm-hmm. say 6 to 10 rowers on this boat and none of the guys move mm-hmm. or, or do any i don't know if that's like the acting and directing instruction mm-hmm. but no, I, I instinctually thought when this thing's like flying out and into the water by itself i'm like uh could none of these six to seven capable able-bodied men swam out and and got this for this woman maybe there's some <laughs> undercurrent maybe there's some literal thematic undercurrent to this but instinctually i'm like oh like none of the guys really could have gotten this painting during this during this time during this sequence it mm-hmm. it kind of like instinctually pissed me off in a way that certainly qualifies for this well, they would guy. have been in the atlantic ocean yeah correct yeah, yeah, presumably. At that time? Or like, the Mediterranean you'd be Sea. you like, I could go, well, if it was... Well, yeah, where is this movie? Well, we assume that it's France just because the movie is from France, so we can assume yeah. that. But the, we know for sure that it's Europe, 
it, the rest kind of doesn't matter because it's a universal story and thus could take place anywhere. I know terrific you, film, by the way. It is. <laughs> it has a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, For which I hate. For a good reason. Yeah, yeah. It, one of the movies that actually deserves its rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And I'd say for uh, somebody who doesn't uh, usually like these movies, I would say watch it. Not even necessarily that like you're going to like it or something because it is a slow boil. Mm -hmm. But it is a movie, to be pretentious, it's one of those movies that's worth watching just to say that you watched because mm -hmm. it's a movie like joker that's worth discussing oh, uh i know but uh they also like joker has great cinematography <laughs> yeah yeah i'm like well much and like, like joker you'd be uh wise before watching it to brush up on your orpheus and um your greek myths exactly <laughs> no, and uh, joker fucking sucks and man. also You're like joker just... also like joker it's also scored by a woman uh that's a... me yeah um well that's so we got a baby versus the man. Uh, um, the, the faceless boat. man. Hmm. It's tough. How are we going to decide this? Who, well, the like, baby has a bigger thematic impact, but the man is more relatable. Relatable to who? Relatable to, like, how many times have you dropped something somewhere and capable Expected people didn't... a whole bunch of people to save it for you. Or one out of a group of, I don't know, ten. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they didn't have much else going on. Like, it's a, it's a tried-and-true trope you see in the movies, except it's usually reserved for rom-coms. I think your, yours wins just because it's Maybe. a bigger thematic We have a bigger obstacle. conversation about it, um, and a bigger presence, and the visceral reaction. Like, we remember... Even in jest of a film that, uh, like, deals with um, tremendous, like, tremendously sensitive and delicate themes and mm -hmm. imagery, uh... It was just funny. I mean, to the fact that the baby to me. I think it's like I think the baby wins just because. Who has a better shot against Nat Faxon? Because that's what this is all about. We're gonna try to figure out. Yeah. You know, the I don't think goes the on. baby. I don't think this uh, is the first seeding. Stranger. Oh, so we decide at the end of this, right? I think so. Okay, yeah. Where we pick one from each film. It's tough. Champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was Chevy Chase versus Nat Faxon, and, and then and this. then he moved on. Okay, so, so we... now it's the baby versus the sailors. The lazy sailors. Okay, the so, apathetic sailors. So here's what I'm thinking. The baby the is a, is a unique challenge to the rowboatman or rowboatsman <laughs> as you uh Whatever as you word call you want to call him. Yeah. Because the rowboatsman has the pal of being like just any random person who can mm -hmm. like ruin your day, but sensibly, ostensibly, wow. by not doing anything. But I think the this baby is a more unique it. challenge, so I have to choose the baby just the to baby. see what stranger things have happened. As well, the um, the gentleman in mm -hmm. the beginning mm -hmm. act as like kind of a story. Well, I think it's worth pointing out right? that you completely missed the man, uh, the rowboatsman. Yeah, but that's and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, so I think like that disqualifies them in the way in that way. So like... we got a baby versus Nate Faxon. Be... Do you want to see if this baby is even credited? Like, oh yeah, I will one hundred percent be credited because they have uh, so many laws. Like, do every... lots of research on you... this professional video podcast. I bet you the baby, typing. and we have a lot of general knowledge about movies, which really helps us along. Um, I will say, I guarantee you, the baby was a total diva on set. <laughs> um... It's like the baby couldn't even be bothered to lift a finger. Showed up late, cried all the time, probably slept on set too. It was it was basically the equivalent of like T J Miller. There's yeah. Well, plus being a, a party to abortion was probably a lot like T J Miller. But oh yeah, that Daily Beast article. Did he like make people get abortions? Or? I there was one of the first poorly done Me Too stories was this uh, Daily Beast article where the writer congratulates themselves and their sole thing is basically uh that he had a toxic relationship with one woman and he was mm -hmm. like very abusive mm -hmm. but the article is like written in such a poorly done way that it was taking a shot at tj miller which is frustrating in and of itself but uh i would not be surprised if tj miller was a party to somebody's abortion <laughs> if not his own failed because like well you T know what woman sees him as like, yeah, I'm gonna go with this guy. Ah, because he's funny. Like, I remember thinking he was funny when I saw him in Cloverfield. I mean, TJ Miller is gonna come up at some point in this podcast. Yeah. He yeah, does way too much. Underwater, yeah. or... Ready Player One, yeah. or yeah, She's Out of My League, or 
whatever. And it, basically, where he, I'd like to point out in She's Out of My League. There is a character in mm. Portrait of a Lady on Fire called Anti Canadian Arsonist. Who's that guy? I know the painting gets burned, but it's by their own. Can- Noah Segura. I wonder if that is related to Tom Segura. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they everybody's like connected. Doesn't matter that it's a separate industry. This is the first time DP separate page I've ever had to ask to be um, translated for me. Oh well, I am, have you seen IMDb lately? Yeah, I saw really. I saw somebody update the page for Home Alone Two: Lost in New York, and it says as of 2021. Donald Trump yes, is the that. only cast member of <laughs> to us in New York to essentially like support an insurrection. Yeah. So it's like, are there any other cast members? Maybe Tim Curry, maybe Macaulay Culkin, Rob who could Schneider. have done that. Done... Schneider is a turncoat. <laughs> yeah, um, he is. So... He is a Republican who made a Lincoln reference, though. Who's that? Rob Schneider? Yeah, he's a known... Did he play Lincoln in that film? No, but he was talking about... Um... The Lincoln film? He's like, I haven't seen Democrats this pissed since we freed the slaves. He, he said that no. on social media. He literally was like, anyways... I, I, I do love how these films this. inspire, like, we're coming Just up with that guy's automatically. Yeah, because as... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we caught the tail end of Keanu the other day when we were flipping through the TV. Yeah. Just in time to see Rob Hubel get punched. And I was like, I, I've i seen this movie many times. Hilarious mm-hmm. movie. Big mm-hmm. fan of Key and Peele. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, Will Forte especially. Mm-hmm. Um, Rob Hubel shows up, gets punched in the face. And they're like, it's very Give clear it that he probably would have been the guy if not for Anna Faris's, um Playing herself. Bitch boy. Yeah. Who she shoot tries to shoot Tiffany Haddish just yeah. because Which is always a mistake. Yeah. Don't ever shoot Tiffany Haddish. No. Um <laughs> Well she looks good in dreads, she, by the way, hilarious. with the cornrows. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, bad trip is hilarious. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. yeah. Anywho, so mm-hmm. Matt Maxon versus Baby. What's your reaction? And why are you picking Matt Max? I think I th- well, I always think because our world is is very and primordial and simple. If it came down to a physical fist fight I think that Nat Faxon should win. Even with the eye rakes, the eye gouges. Well, here's the thing. I can had picture... Had techniques reminiscent I can of a picture, young Ric Flair. I'm sure it's happened in some indie comedy mm-hmm. where Nat Faxon probably has picked up a baby and it poked him in the eye at one point. I can imagine That's that being a scene. I wonder if that shows up in one of the... Like, if we're going to watch, like, some random... Joshy, probably, if he's in that movie. Joshy? Have you heard of it? I thought you meant like Joshi. Like no. women, that's it's what they a, call women's Japanese wrestling. I was like, Nat Faxon? It's a movie where... <laughs> Is it startup? It's a movie where a bunch of these like millennial um, actors who are part of an improv group are in. And the main character, what? Max Greenfield is in it. What's so the Schmidt, movie called? It's called Joshi. I believe it's on Hulu. I'm pretty sure either Rob Hubel or Nat Faxon is definitely in it. Max Greenfield, a.k.a. Schmidt, is in it. Uh, the main guy from Silicon Valley. Uh, I believe his name starts with Thomas, but I can't remember. Middle ditch. Yeah. Richard he Hendricks. He plays the title character uh, in Joshi, and it basically them trying to do the big chill thing um, for the millennial era, which doesn't really, really work. Um, but I haven't seen this movie, but I imagine Rob Hubel is probably in it, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking up um, Nat Faxon's filmography mm-hmm. at the moment, but uh, I mean, Robin Ewell should be in, like I was saying, can't be in enough stuff. How does he make a living? Rob does he? Ewell? Yeah. How does anyone make a living? Uh, so I guess he doesn't like, have an to actor. Be... How does Paul well, Shear make a living? Well, How does Aziz make a here's living? Here's my thing, because in the 20th century, people acted a lot, and now... How does Eric Wareheim make a living? And like, acting know? and direction, here's the thing. Well, there's more work to do, so right. you can do That's things and not... But I feel like That's in the, the 20th actors. century, like, you saw actors all the time. Yeah. Now it's like... I haven't seen Jodie Foster in, like, five years, you know? Like, I haven't seen them. There are actors who take a really long break in between movies. Work because exactly. a lot of, some of them have, like, outside... Yeah, like, gigs, commercials. Like Ashton Kutcher with his human trafficking enterprise. Like, man, he must be making so much money. By the way, uh, <laughs> Joshi, which has, came out in 2016. Well, I have no clue. I'm, I'm looking up the cast for it now. Um... I need to find out because it will indicate for like the rest of the cast, like who's in it. Uh, Adam Pally, Alex Ross Perry. I did not know Alex Ross Perry. Alex Ross like Perry it. is one of my favorite. 
Nick Kroll, Brett Gelman, Jenny Slate, These Lauren people are Graham, all in Aubrey this, Plaza, this Joe Swanson. Yes, Allison Brie, oh, Paul Weitz, Jake Johnson, but of course, Frankie Shaw. I don't know all these names, but uh, that's all right. Yeah, Paul so, Reiser. All right, we can look yeah. this up later. So, yeah, that's all of them. Getting now. back to the, this fucking guy, I think mm-hmm. this has been a very robust discussion. Mm-hmm. And I think we are ready to crown Nat, not Nate Faxon. Yeah. Not Nate Cordry. Nat Faxon. Mm-hmm. But this fucking guy. Of yeah. these two random ass films that we've paired against each other. Yeah. 19 year difference between these yeah. films. Yes. It's, um, that's crazy. I mean. Or 18, actually, because 2019 minus 2002. Oh, it was 2002. I thought yeah, this was it's... 2000. No, 2002. Hmm. It's, it, this it was, was a post 9 11 film. <laughs> Release post 9-11, film pre-9-11, so it's this in the... This movie could have been partially responsible for that. It's basically, yeah, it's like the Saudis saw that, yeah. and they're like, this yeah, fucking guy, like, no, we, we gotta do something about live. this. We hey, gotta... We should make jokes, our dad uh, died in 9-11. He was a pilot of one of the planes uh, mm-hmm. towards the end. On, like, towards the end, <laughs> for the beginning. <laughs> he was one of the hijackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fun because that's Will's birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. never forget. I always try and place myself when they ask where you were on 9-11. You just ask what year. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where yeah. were you on 9-11? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, what year? Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's a Zach Galifianakis joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, wa- I was... A- we were at church, by the way. When that Did happened? You- yes. Uh, I was in... Uh, Where, weren't you at element, school? We were in elementary yeah, school. Yeah, at church, Blessed um, Sacrament. Maybe when it happened. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I where else? I was in grade eight. Yeah. But, like, I remember... <laughs> we can't be talking about this, too. Yeah, we can. Our teacher rolled in the TV and said, I don't want to hear any jokes about this because... Already, which yeah. sets the stage oh, already. Goodness. It's like as soon he as they say... no introduction. Don't laugh says, at the funeral. Joke. Don't laugh at the funeral. He just what wheels happened. the TV in. And says, don't laugh. We're dating ourselves already here. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, he was, he volunteered on weekends. Oh, so this was a supply teacher? No. He volunteered on weekends at we- RMC. Nat Faxon? Mr. Willis. <laughs> oh, okay. And he said, don't laugh at this because if. Because I'm in the go reserves. To war, I'm going to have to go overseas. Which and then what, everybody laughed. <laughs> we didn't know what was going on. The teacher is in the said, reserves, by the way. Do not yeah. laugh at this because if we go to war, I have to go overseas. <laughs> and everyone laughed. And then As you if... turned on the TV, and the first thing we saw was like amateur footage of someone running down the stairs. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I came home and felt like um, I was too old to play with action figures. I was really. <laughs> a... it, was, it was like my parents. Our mm-hmm. parents, not just mine, Will's not adopted, mm-hmm. um, and our aunt was here, and I just, it was wrong. I have to take this off, by the way, just because it's <laughs> so hot with this. But, uh, so, mm-hmm. to wrap it up, yeah, this fucking guy um, of Orange County, mm-hmm. <laughs> and How did we get to 11 because of uh, the year difference. That the, oh yeah, Orange County on 9/11. Yeah, because for 9/11, it's right. in the same territory no, yeah. as yeah. that Spike Lee movie. What was it called? Uh, that filmed yeah, pre 9/11. <laughs> 25th Hour. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a fantastic film. Yeah. Yeah. So Nat Faxon, just yeah. to wrap it up here. Yeah. Yeah. Nat Faxon is our Wins... champion of this first face-off. In the this fucking guy TFG Grand Prix between Orange County and Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Yeah, I want to say one more thing though. Sure. About Do you think that Nat Faxon uh, will be represent like because people seem content to describe a lot of movies as pre and post 9/11, mm-hmm. and and being that this movie is right before that, do you think that our post that that the winner of the TFG Grand Prix will be a pre or post 9 11. So this is over game. under 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're it, asking. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to say we're going to end up crowning a pre 9 11 guy. I actually think so. Because we're going to watch a movie and it's going to have Jim Belushi and no one's going to be able <laughs> to compete with that sack of shit. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I was funny. He was on. He was asking on Twitter the other day for anime recommendations. Jim? Jim Belushi. Wow. Yeah, according to Jim, he's into manga. Yeah. Um, I wonder if he knows what anyways. I bet you he listens to this podcast. I bet. Yeah. Um, Man, anywho. This is going to be a bitch to edit. 
Yeah, I mean, we got interrupted a few times. I thought about... Her mom wanted to know how to update her iPad and if she could still... I'm thinking if out. if we get her on there, we're keeping it in. But I don't think we did. It was uh, no, it was way too long. It was like a five-minute interruption. It was like a minute. I think we're going to struggle to have people listen beyond ten minutes if they don't Well, we got us. 57 plays on the Twin Peaks podcast. So yeah, that's Twin Peaks. And, well... This is the Twin Peaks of podcasts. I guess so. Yeah. There's a... Because that took 25 years to make sense of it. Because you got and you got me into Twin Peaks by saying it's a who's yeah. who of and that fucking guy. And then I've like guy. nailed this concept into your brain. Um, so Wrapping it up. Yeah. Matt Faxon is our inaugural champion. Mm-hmm. The way this will work is once we have eight champions, yeah, we will have our official Grand Prix tournament mm-hmm. because that will mean that we've went through 16 candidates yeah. to qualify mm-hmm. for the Grand Prix tournament in which we will it'll be the best of the best or the worst of the worst or mm-hmm. the most forgettable versus the most forgettable hopefully we have a good mix of, of men women mm-hmm. babies yeah. fucking babies yeah um and i will reach out to nat fax and myself telling him to let him know we're doing this podcast does he have a comment on that character but, but once again or yes on the character mm-hmm. We are fans of these actors and actresses for the most part. Fuck yeah. you, Jim Belushi, Johnny Depp, and Sean Penn. Um, sure, there's others. They're all great actors, though. No, they're not. I think they are. I do not think that they are. But that's what this podcast is about. Mm-hmm. Johnny, we love you. We'd love to have oh, you on the podcast. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, I'd like... So I you're telling like, me if, if Johnny Depp was like... He can be on the podcast. Yes, with. absolutely. Everybody is welcome. This really isn't even a podcast yet because we haven't uploaded anything. Yeah, well... Officially, yeah. at this time of recording... <laughs> So we have our first champion. Yeah. We have our first this fucking guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for listening. Yeah, For absolutely. your patience. Um, this will should only get smoother as we go along. Mm-hmm. Next episode, we mm-hmm. have been throwing around a couple titles. Um, I've been I, neither of us have seen the movie Barry, Barry Lyndon, Lyndon, and that's been um, that's just come up in conversation. Mm-hmm. I own a Blu-ray copy. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have told me how jealous they are that. You know, they wish they could watch it for the first time. And also, we said that, that too bad. We'll be matching up to The Rocketeer. I, per, think I, th- I thought you, but I thought you said you made a specific, you said, Will, I don't want to watch The Rocketeer. Yeah, maybe that could be. Um, I just we'll want, see. but We're, I want to throw it out there that we officially will not be watching The Rocketeer. Yeah, and yeah, we'll just okay. see what happens. Yeah, okay. Because so my it, Disney Plus ends on, on the 21st. So you of want January. to use it. Or on no, the Rocketeer, because of... apparently, because Disney Plus does not have anything good. Because I liked it, I just didn't want to watch it today. But well, yeah, okay. So I'm not like dead set on the Rocketeer. It, but it, but I love the title of the movie. Uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll find someone like um because we watched a character drama, mm-hmm. a teen sex comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, then we're gonna watch a Kubrick masterpiece yeah so we might as well watch mm-hmm. like a c-level superhero disney movie mm-hmm. that i loved as a kid but i i've heard and that it holds jennifer up conley. i've mm-hmm. i've heard that it holds up oh man jennifer conley is a babe in that oh so, the rocketeer uh as well and it made me think of its selection for it mm-hmm. the rocketeer celebrates its anniversary this month as well wow thanks for keeping track of or all some those. movie does yeah um so yeah Thank you once yep. again. Join us next time. And hopefully by then, we figure out an outro. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Man, stop or pull.